Hello, this is Ideas on Truth and I'm Lisa Taylor. I am talking tonight about being brave, about being yourself, being courageous, you know, taking off the armor and showing our hearts. You know, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage. It'll, it takes being vulnerable and kind of fighting through that place of fear of being vulnerable. Uh, I know that you all know what I'm talking about. And there are times when just allowing ourselves to be open and to be raw and kind of live on our edge, sometimes it's really scary. A lot of times it's really scary. Colleen, I know you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's, you know, it takes a lot of courage and I just want to I just want to give you courage. I want to encourage you to allow yourself to be vulnerable. Allow yourself to feel that edge of, <gasps> what are they gonna think? Because when we do that, we give others permission to do the same. And that is what this world needs more than anything. I remember in high school, I used to, I, I didn't smoke and I didn't drink, and I used to have kids criticize me all the time. Um, now, mind you, by the end of high school, authenticity and vulnerability are my favorite topics. Yay, Colleen. Of course they are. Of course they are. My sister, my soul sister, Colleen. Um, vulnerability, I, and you know, if you, if you don't know Brene Brown, you must go find her, seek her out. The Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, and and what she says is the baby between rising strong and daring greatly is dare to lead and it's like the baby those two got married and had a baby and the baby went to work that's what dare to lead is so if you don't know Brene, Brene Brown's work please go look it up but vulnerability and she does a lot of work on shame too and sort of the difference between shame and guilt but I digress when I was in high school, didn't smoke, didn't drink, didn't go to doctors because I always was a metaphysician and I always turned to the divine laws for healing. And um, there's a quote actually I was going to share with you. I'll get back to the quote. So throughout school, from grade school all the way through high school, I went to this kind of public school in a small northeastern town. Um, you know, there were a lot of kids who made fun of me. Um, criticized me, I think were afraid for me out of a sense of care. Um, and I had to be very brave to say, no, this is what, hey, Tonya, this is what I believe in and this is how I live my life. And, you know, they would say, oh, you don't believe in doctors. I was like, no, it's not that I don't believe in doctors. My grandfather is a surgeon. Of course, I believe in doctors. I just chose to make prayer my first aid and medicine my second aid. And my medicine was prayer and had a bit of a struggle and had to be really courageous and brave and allow myself to be vulnerable and be ridiculed through um, a lot of school. But what's interesting, and my mom during that time when I would come home in tears said, stick to your guns, stick to what is true for you, you know, be brave, be courageous and stand tall and stand strong because in the end they will respect you for standing up for what you believe in. And I believed her and wasn't sure if that was true. And by the time I got to graduation, I actually had several people come up to me after we graduated, like right after the graduation ceremony, which I thought was kind of classic, um, come up to me and say, you know, I really respect the fact that you stood up for your beliefs and that you lived by what you believe in. And I thought that was pretty remarkable for them to say that, you know, good for them for being courageous and saying something like that. But it really made an impression on me, even at that young tender age of 17, um, that it matters. You know, it matters for us to be courageous and be brave and allow ourselves to be vulnerable and stand for what we believe in, stand, be ourself. You know, be true to yourself. Obviously, it's a classic expression for a reason. Um, have the courage to be true to yourself. So growing up, I, I did not go to doctors. My mom and dad actually had, because my dad's dad was a surgeon, and my mom and dad actually split when I was very young, but while I was young, they had a deal. My dad said, 
if the kids aren't healed in three days, going kind of the metaphysical route and, and applying the divine laws, then I'm taking them to a doctor because I know that works. And we were always healed in three days, like with all the childhood, everything like measles and mumps and strep throat and all the, all the stuff, broken finger and sprained ankles and the things the kids get involved in. We were always healed in three days. And my dad saw healing after healing after healing. And there's a, um, there's a quote actually that I wanted to share with you guys from this book I quote all the time, Science and Health, and it's in the preface where she talks about the physical healing of Christian science results now as in Jesus' time, because the whole book is about rediscovering the laws behind how Jesus healed um, and being able to apply those laws now and being able to practice that kind of healing today, because it's very radical. It's not, it's not for wimps. <laughs> it's definitely not for wimps because the world goes in a very different direction. So anyway, the physical healing of Christian science results now as in Jesus' time from the operation of divine principle before which sin and disease lose their reality in human consciousness and disappear as naturally and as necessarily as darkness gives place to light and sin to reformation. Now that's a really long quote and I'll put it in the comments, um, but it's a pretty powerful quote. And it basically is saying that the, the operation of divine principle is what causes healing because it causes a change of thought. And I, I've shared a lot of stories here and I talk about it a lot here. And if you're interested in it, the book Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Bigoretti is a really, really good, it is the essential tool of learning the science. And um, I highly recommend it. There are uh, probably lots of other books and, and ways to discover what this divine science is all about. I talk a lot about it here because I've lived it all my life. And um, there are many of you, and thank you, there are many of you who have you know, written emails and, and had conversations with me kind of on the side about what this means and how to get more involved and how to understand more of it and practice it. And, I sometimes have called myself a divine lawyer because I apply the law, the divine laws and try to get people to, you know, get out of jail of these sort of material encumbrances and what seem to be laws, which really aren't and really don't have power if we then go to the court of spirit and start applying those divine laws. So anyway, it's a huge topic and I scratch the surface ever so slightly here. And as you know, I love it and I will keep kind of blabbing about it and shouting from the rooftops and really appreciate those of you who um, have ideas and wanna share them and talk in the comments and share the videos and on and on and on. So do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ideas on Truth, and do put comments below and do share these out because the more we can spread the word, the more we can all be brave and stand up for what we believe in, and you know it is going to shift the world there is there is a way for us to shift the world and that is for each of us to stand in our truth for each of us to speak our truth and be vulnerable and be courageous and bear our hearts to everyone we come in contact with and stand strong so i love you i honor the divine in all of you so much and i i just love this stuff so thanks for watching and i will talk to you soon bye